Hey guys, how's it going? This morning we are on Mackinac Island in Michigan. We are here with Jack Barnwell who has designed and built so many of the gorgeous gardens here at these gorgeous homes. This one behind us is called Crossroads and he is going to walk us through this garden. It's going to be a pretty special I'm surprise. excited about this. Yeah. Yes, because we did get to see this one. It's been years ago and it's been worked on quite a lot. Extensively. Yeah, yes. we've done a major, major overhaul on this one. The uh, new owners have uh, put a lot of time and love and effort into this one to renovate it and take it back to a lot of its original glory and they added on some really, really cool special features that we'll show you guys through. So let's go in. It kind of catches your breath when you walk into a garden like this. It's kind of secret. Yeah. What's the hedging around the outside? These are all northern white cedar. So this is our kind of typical arborvitae hedging that we use everywhere mm -hmm. on the island. They're really easy to trim and keep tight. And um, they grow really well here. They're native here. And all the you know massive, massive trees that you see around us are all the same thing. These are all cedars as well. Okay. That uh, that you know, and that's what will happen to all of these if you let them go. So, these would become oh, yeah. this. Oh yeah, my they're, they're all the same, and so they're really easy to propagate and grow locally. A lot of nurseries and stuff grow them in mm -hmm. just sandy fields all over northern Michigan. So inexpensive and easy to come by. So all the hedging all over Mackinac Island, um, almost exclusively, are all really? that northern white cedar. I've noticed yeah. that uh, around a lot of gardens, but I love how big these are because they really do room this space in. Yeah, and this, this the, you know, the front yard here is a really cool special space in that it's this fairy tale like setting under this massive canopy of these huge, beautiful sugar maples. And it's very, very private because out on this road uh, it, during the day, there's a constant flow mm -hmm. of tourist traffic um, on carriages and doing, you know, that whole beautiful, iconic, you know, Mm -hmm. tour of Mackinac Island and so in here it gives this whole entire landscape this great privacy but the hedge is kept low enough that from the front porch and from the bedrooms and everything above there's a beautiful view out Ooh. of the Mackinac Bridge and of the water and everything so they get to you know enjoy the beautiful view but have this cool privacy. little Best private nook in here yeah, yeah it's really awesome how old do you think these sugar maples are you know I should probably get them all dated a little bit but I think that um, they're probably as old, if not older than the house. So probably in the like 150 year old range. Oh. I didn't even know, I mean, I don't know about the lifespan of this type of tree, but I didn't even know that they could live that long. Yeah, these are pretty impressive specimens My for sure. Goodness gracious. And in the fall, they're all really vibrant, like yellowy orange, like a really beautiful, beautiful glow to them. Mm -hmm. And so on the, light blue house this the paint color is called cerulean mm. uh, which is a fancy word for blue uh -huh. and uh <laughs> light blue uh, cerulean sky is the paint color and the yellow of all these sugar maples surrounding that blue is like really really stunning mm. super yeah, magical that a color that's used a lot on the island that kind of blue or that kind of shade yeah of that blue? that is and there's another house that's called um, Skyview mm -hmm. Cottage that's just down the way here that's being painted right now and it's being painted this same color. I love it. Uh, which is, I, I think it looks really pretty. And Skyview, when you look at the house, you know, it literally blends right into the light blue sky. It sits out on this oh. cliff. It's really cool how that is sitting. Did you plant all of these? Yeah, these are all um, your typical smooth hydrangea, Annabelle hydrangeas here which you know, normally would just totally flop and blow out all over the place. But the nice tight boxwood hedge almost acts as like a nice staking there. That's a great And idea. I love how in the summer, these last a long time in here under this big canopy. Mm -hmm. um, we get a nice long bloom time out of these in the summer. And they wrap around the whole cottage like a cloud. Oh. So the cottage is like floating on a cloud. Yeah. Again, to give it that like fairy tale kind of magic. Oh. Um, and they really do well here in the springtime though there's probably i was going to say hundreds but probably thousands of daffodils oh. really really tall white narcissus that are yeah. planted in here so you get that same kind of white flush and some nice fragrance from those in the spring mm -hmm. because in the fall we cut these down to 
nothing. Really? All, all the way down, yeah. Oh my and goodness. And these beds are mulched in just like rock and that. gravel. So this is all new um, growth from the base. 100% new growth, yeah. So these we, wow. Mackinac is a pretty tough place to be in the winter time. Yeah. Uh, what <laughs> zone is Mackinac? Mackinac is like zone 4B. But you get the wind. Yeah, and... but I think on some days it feels like it's negative 4B. Like oh, it's so, yeah. <laughs> it's so I mean, cold. It's so cold. <laughs> um, and, and the wind off of the ice and everything like that. There's little pockets on the island that are more protected mm -hmm. where we can get away with some fives and, and stuff. That's why, you know, behind here we have some Japanese maples and things that we can get away with. But mm -hmm. there's also parts of the island that I would say are zone Three. Gosh, and to create gardens in that and can, to consider all of those It's conditions. actually really fun because it, it allows me to design, you know, for all these little micro environments. And the uh -huh. island has a lot of elevation too. Mm -hmm. So right down on the water versus up here on the cliff is also very, very different. And so, you, you know, you can look at the trees and the natural environment and get an understanding of what's going to grow and do really well. Um, over time and a landscape like this I've been working on this particular one since you know before with the previous owners as well uh -huh. and they inherited the gardener I guess you could say yeah. you know how nice uh, yeah <laughs> um, and uh, so you know I came with the house but um, you learn a property so well and what's going to do well yeah. where and everything and this whole entire garden space here is completely new um, when the current owners bought it, this was all just pea gravel, the, the whole, whole thing. thing. And the fountain was here. The fountain was there, but that's it. Wow. And um, and we planted in these Japanese. Well, yeah, watch, watch the, the apples. Apples, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Japanese maples. These are pagoda dogwood trees. One of my absolute oh, favorite yeah. little like under canopy trees. Pagodas are really easy to trim and keep lacy, and they kind of have that same architectural layering that a Japanese maple does, uh -huh. you know, so they're just really cool uh, small trees. Beautiful. And then these are tough stuff hydrangeas. We have so many different hydrangeas on this property. They're just a summer And stunner. they just are gorgeous. Yeah, here. they look pretty good. They don't have an iron deficiency, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> they're not burned. This is just amazing. Yeah, they are. Lots planted. of sweet woodruff and oh, yeah. brunera and yeah, I love using ground cover like this. Um, this is really kind of a signature style of mine, especially in a, a shade or part sun garden like this. You can get away with doing really healthy, thick drifts of mixes of ground cover. Mm -hmm. And the thing I like about this style of gardening is it really requires so little maintenance. Sure. I mean, for, for this little picture right here, you can see uh, a spring cleanup, sure, you know, rake it out, blow it out, clean That's it up. That's usual, yeah. Mm -hmm. Typical, a little bit of fertilization, and then we let it go. We do not touch these beds until fall. Wow. Fall time, you know, trim back all the herbaceous perennials in the, in the ferns yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Trim it all back and, and let, it, let it ride. Wow. And then in the spring, it just comes back up, flushes back out. So really easy. And then we're not mulching all the time. We're not weeding because uh -huh. the weeds don't stand a sure. chance. Sure, yeah. You know? When it's so peaceful. To have that just massive green, yeah. different shades of green and different textures. I love it. Mm -hmm. Love that. We need to up the, our game in that area, Erin. Make <laughs> note. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> yeah, these pagodas are gorgeous. The berries. Yeah, the berries are really, really cool and popular with all the little birdies. Uh -huh. um, but in the springtime, these are all white flowers. So it's just like a cloud again you know so they're your white before your yeah yeah kind of come into the picture yeah oh i love it yeah i'm kind of crazy about pagoda dogwoods i went a little nuts on those over the last couple of years really so a lot of the you find yourself doing that oh like yeah you hone in i on fall a in love with yeah. certain plants and then i'm like where can i squeeze right. them you know <laughs> especially if i find a nursery that has really good stock of uh -huh. something beautiful i'm like i'll take all of them uh -huh. there. i'll figure I'll out where to spot. put them yeah exactly <laughs> So oh. this, this spot here is kind of the, the back of the cottage where uh, they pull in in their carriage here. And this is traditionally how the house is always used. And the, the new owners have horses and carriages and everything and are keeping up that sort of Mackinac spirit and that Mackinac lifestyle, which is really, really cool for all of us, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but they pull in here in their carriage under this beautiful port of chair mm -hmm. And then this is this elevated platform here is so that they can step right oh. off of the carriage. 
um, and or nice. you know load luggage right. and everything like that right off. Um, and the apple tree was planted there literally for the horses. So when the carriage is parked here and they're loading yeah. and everything, the horses can bend down and eat. It's producing way too many apples oh. though. <laughs> like it's a mess. But Need to get and they're literally falling as we speak, <laughs> you know, so you gotta be a little careful in there. But that's what they're bobbing for apples in the oh. in the horse trough there yeah. too. So they, they get some water, get some apples and Oh, there goes one. And away, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When we were standing there earlier, I almost got smoked. <laughs> Um, this is a pretty bad, very cottagey. Yeah, and the daisies need to be whacked back. And this is a good example too of a, of a little maintenance trick that we use. So when the daisies start to go like this, this is your typical, you know, Shasta daisy. When they start to go like this, and there's still a lot of good white blooms, a lot of people's tendency is just going to be to deadhead only the brown ones, which mm -hmm. is a nightmare, right? Nobody's yeah. got time for that. Right. So with daisies, we have found that you, it's sometimes hard to do, but you, you, if you cut them back pretty hard, mm -hmm. like down to just a few inches even, mm -hmm. oh. there's so much energy in that plant still for uh -huh. the rest of the season that they will flush out and bloom like with your mums. Nice. And they'll get another full flush of nice blooms out of these daisies. If you make the hard call and cut them all back right when they start going, even like a week or two ago would have been even better. So you'll still you'll be cutting back good blooms too. All the good blooms, the, all sure. these new blooms, everything, which is hard oh, to do. Yeah. Yeah. But you cut them back hard, and then you get this beautiful like white flush for fall. Awesome. It will happen. <laughs> I know, awesome. and not a lot of people trust that 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 will happen. So, so yeah, where this do you want to go? Structure here. What? Yeah, if, this is the original barn. Okay. So this little cutie um, is is original to the house and used to be much further behind the house because mm -hmm. this is this whole back entry and stuff is an addition that there was several additions over the years. The original cottage was fairly small up there. You can see the original windows oh, okay. yeah. with the split panes yes. and everything. That was the original cottage up okay. there. And then this um, back section was added on and then that whole section over there with the chimney was added on at a later date oh, and that's a big goodness. kitchen. and. So there was a lot of additions over the years that have made it into a much bigger cottage. And so the barn used to be pretty far behind the original cottage and this was all paddock here. Mm -hmm. And then there over where the new barn is, there was a whole nother cottage. Wow. Um, and now it has turned into one piece of property as the owners kind of expanded and made it all one. Wow. Yeah. Um, <sighs> So, so do yeah. you want to approach the, you guys, there's so many amazing pockets in this garden. We just kind of did a preview walkthrough before we started our tour with you. Do you want to approach it from the other side or do you want to approach it from this side? Because there's always like a magical approach. I know, I know, right? Let's, yeah. So we're going to take you guys back into the front yard here for a minute and go around the other side of the cottage to see the, the kitchen garden and the outdoor kitchen space and everything, the entertaining space before we head back toward the barn and we'll introduce you to the horses and all that. Oh, you're gonna love it. All right guys, so we're back in the front yard. We started kind of that way a little bit, but this is kind of the front corner. And I just, I kind of want to know, cause I see these <laughs> in gardens around the island, not this exact piece, but right. things like this. So this turtle, they're, they're all painted differently. And it was a part of a fundraiser that was done on the island probably 20 years ago or something mm -hmm. now. And so all the different cottagers and things on the island were bidding on these big hand-painted turtles to feature throughout their gardens. Mm -hmm. And some of these went for a lot of money because it was a mm -hmm. fundraiser for the medical sure. center. Oh, okay. And so some of these things went for ridiculous amounts of money, really? but it was all for a good cause, yeah, right? Sure. Um, and then in the end you're rewarded with Yeah, yeah, they're really, garden. really fun. And they're, <laughs> they're holding up really well. I mean, you know, they're- That's a long time, exactly. yeah. Exactly, yeah, they're fun, um, big fiberglass turtles. That so is a I, statement. I, I do not know where you can get your own fiberglass turtle. We, but we have no link for No, you we have no link. I'm these. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is one of a kind in her pearls there. So Love it. Yeah. But, um, you, you have know, to come to Mackin Island to enjoy these turtles. Right. I also love, I love, well, a couple of things. So there is quite a lot of um, lawn up here, which I love lawn. I think it adds such a peaceful vibe to a space. But I also love your borders. I love this mm -hmm. kind of, you know, it's that, that little bit of tidiness with all of the gorgeous perennials and shrubs you have behind them. Yeah, and that's a, you know, kind of a design element that I like to throw into gardens like this, where there's a little bit of formality 
with the you know the hedging that ties the whole landscape together these long big ribbons of boxwood that are mm -hmm. all around the house and everything the tight you know clipness of the hedge mm -hmm. but then this big bank border can be wild and whimsy and crazy mm -hmm. and i think if you didn't have the boxwood it would just look like a big weedy mess right yeah. but it's almost like we're here mm -hmm. this is all intentional yeah you know and it's supposed to be a little wild and free out here and we're okay with that and same kind of thing with the lawn this is what on the island we call a cottage lawn and you know sure we could hit this with a bunch of different herbicides and things and and weed and feed or whatever mm -hmm. sure. and make it a perfect beautiful beautiful lawn but the look and the feel of it is supposed to be uh, this way and that there, there's a whole lot of little teeny like English daisies oh, and yeah. um, and uh, you know clover and things throughout the whole entire thing so in the in the springtime we do not mow this until late late May even early June really and let it get a little hazy and it's just full of flowers it's oh, super super beautiful I bet. the horses when they first arrive are let out here in the front yard oh, and they really? just chow it all down oh, perfect. And it's like, yeah that it's works. great it's yeah. great and so we don't put any chemicals on it whatsoever and we just sort of let it be and that's why even there's all these kind of dips and dives and holes and stuff it's just sort of meant to be a little more cottagey and it's a little it, more relaxed it fits the vibe yeah. of the island and yeah yeah it really does it doesn't need to be perfectly flat and everything and um it makes it a lot easier to maintain when you don't have Not so fussy about super it super high yeah. expectations yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. you guys this area is so neat yeah this is a really special little spot here i just love these cute little gates they too are cute. aren't they nice yes little double gates yes yeah this is the outdoor kitchen and entertaining space. Uh, we just recently rebuilt this entire thing um, as a part of the, the recent renovation of this whole property. And um, I think it's pretty awesome. It's the awesome. Dimensional bluestone and the soldier course or the border here uh -huh. is a tumbled, this is a tumbled uh, Fond du Lac limestone out of Wisconsin. So it gives it a really cool element of formality there and border mm -hmm. but it's the exact same stone that is used for all the flagstone throughout the property and the driveway and okay. all that yeah so it again you know ties it all together with the new and the old yeah. and everything now are these aquapots or are these oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. all these are aquapots are uh, self-watering pots uh, so the team only has to come here once a week to water all this stuff and obviously you can see there they're thriving. Thriving, yes. doing really well. They need a little deadheading and cleaning off, of course, all, always. But um, yeah, very, very happy. And all red, white, and blue is kind of the theme around here with mm -hmm. all the American flag decoration everywhere. It's mm -hmm. a very summery cottage feel. I love but this. But this is a very oven. playful, entertaining space. They've got the uh, outdoor pizza oven, which is you know big and central right there. So when that's going, it's a really warm you know, fire-like feel uh -huh. when you're out eating out here and dining. Mm -hmm. It's like a fire in the background. Yeah. But you also can be right there, chefing it up, Ugh. pulling pizzas out. And this thing gets so, over 700 degrees. Oh you my. can cook a pizza in this thing in 90 seconds. Oh my goodness. Yeah. These oh. little, little thin pizzas, you know? And this is like a dream space. Yeah. For sure. Wow. Yeah. Wood-fired pizza oven there. And it cranks them out. It's super fun. So, you know, like plenty yes. of prep table yep. and everything. People eating out here. You can be firing pizzas out. Pretty fun. Oh, with a beautiful flower background yeah. here. Chest oh. set. And this whole space, we have like hidden surround sound and all the lighting. I mean, you can see all the cafe lighting uh -huh. at night. It is really cool. I bet it is. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, and how long? So a, a, a patio space this big with these enormous stones what kind of uh, time frame does it like take to make something like this for you and your team when you did that? um this was i mean this one was fairly complex but honestly the lay of all this stuff goes fairly quickly is this it? is a a product called natural paving stone is the company mm -hmm. and it's all gauged which means that it's all cut to the same thickness mm, uh, out of the quarry uh -huh. so it lays like like tile or like brick pavers That's it's nice. very fast uh -huh. lay as opposed to your typical 
blue stone, you get a lot of different variation in thickness and it yeah. can be really challenging because mm -hmm. you're basically setting every stone and leveling them all and yeah. yeah. Uh, where this, you can kind of screech the whole thing level and just uh -huh. lay it really quickly. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. So, so nice. Cedar hot tub. Pretty sweet. Oh, yeah. Um, all cedar. Oh, dang. Yeah. yeah. Quite nice. Yeah, it is nice. Quite nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Quite nice. This. I love <clears throat> this arbor. Yeah, those are grapes. I think they're a Chardonnay. We don't harvest them and use them to make wine or anything they're oh. just for looks and fun but yeah you can see the cute little guys yeah. right here it's just really pretty and in the fall the leaves turn that you know bright beautiful yellow mm -hmm. and the grapes turn and it's it's quite nice we lost one you can see right here oh shoot um oh they these aren't having here. any problem no i know we only have it. two <laughs> but i do have two more coming to get them going oh i love but, that yeah there are so many different spaces in here. I yeah. mean, just, yeah. Outdoor hangout fire pit area here. There's all, that was really the design is all these little outdoor rooms because it's a fairly it's big fit. rambling property, right? Mm -hmm. And so to divide it up into all these little uses and spaces and stuff makes it, um, I don't know, just really nice. And then if they do have larger parties, you have, uh, the, and these guys are very entertaining people so yeah, yeah mm -hmm. they like to in, invite a lot of friends and things like that and do and they do a lot of fundraisers here mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. really community oriented people that um, do a lot of really great stuff for the community so they'll have big events here and when you have big events and you can have different areas and different yeah. you know spaces for people sure. it's really really quite nice um, and all these beds uh, are again wow. recently renovated and redone to include a tremendous amount of just simple herbaceous perennials mm -hmm. lots of ground cover keep it really really simple and i i, I know you're going to ask what's with the paint on the trees yeah, right just thinking that actually how funny <laughs> so, yeah yes. the paint on the trees was from the previous owners uh -huh. and they had a whole you know a whole litter of little kids and um this whole space was very very different in fact the barn wasn't here at all and the this whole back area was a quidditch oh, field like harry potter yeah. style quidditch and it the whole garden was just designed for wild whimsy playful kid mm -hmm. space yeah. and so all the trees were painted different colors and there was um it was truly like a just a fairy garden fairy yeah it was oh. it was really wild um and we, you know, what are you going to do? Pressure wash it off? I mean, yeah. no. It's, it's, <laughs> what kind of hydrangea have you got right here? That's a whole hedge of quick fire hydrangeas. That is so pretty, getting its beautiful color. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Yeah, they're awesome. That's really one of my favorite hydrangeas, especially in the panicles. That, um, they are so tough. Oh, and they're so architectural. Yeah. I mean, the, the bloom structure. Right, is. right. And I like you know, doing something that is just a little outside the box as mm -hmm. far as a hedge mm -hmm. um, planting, you know, doing a hedge in hydrangea as opposed to you know, all over the property. We have, you know, the cedars evergreen. and the mm -hmm. evergreen boxwood and everything. So it's kind of nice, solid backdrop there. Oh my God. I can't imagine like even, even now this garden as a kid would feel like, yeah. I mean, can you imagine it's playing hide and seek? Fun. Oh, I know. There's a lot of places to hide oh, in here. My kids would love it. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And the horses. Look at this barn, you guys. So this was built fairly recently-ish. Yeah, the barn was just built a, really just finished about a year ago. Okay. And the, not even a year ago, actually. It was just last summer we were building the fences and stuff like that. Oh. Um, and so just really getting its first summer of full use mm -hmm. and, and, and abuse oh. and getting a feel for how the barn flows and how the barn works and things like that. Um, but I want to show you this other before we I know I want to go in the barn, but we're going to go in the barn from the other side because there's a whole other part of the garden that I really want to show you guys and make sure we don't miss. What are these right here? Cause, or this? I guess it's just one. That's really Yeah, pretty. there are. There's. Oh, two couple, of them yeah and there used to be more these are hemlocks oh. and i planted these when they were tiny tiny really? tiny tiny 
Oh. Uh, probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago when the, I used to care for this property from the previous owners. And I put these in, and there were more of them. I think there was four. And these two were able to stay here even through all the renovation work and things. I moved one of them over there in front of that chimney. Uh-huh. Um, oh, yeah. Literally dug it up and hauled it over there in a wheelbarrow wow. and moved it uh, when it was just a little bit smaller. Uh-huh. And then the fourth one just... Didn't make had it. Had to go. Yeah. yeah. It was like right here. Oh, yeah, that happens. Not, not going to work. Not, no. <laughs> not going to work. No, I love the little cones on this. Yeah, they're, they're beautiful. They're so cute. Beautiful. Really, really tough trees. They do not like a lot of sun and wind and oh. they're kind of picky like that. So, so you got to have one of those pockets. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. They do their best when they're in a little shady nook there. And I like the stones here. Yeah, I really like to try to incorporate some kind of real solid border uh -huh. on any kind of garden bed because, it, again, maintenance is always something I'm super conscious of yeah. uh, for any of these because usually it's, e it's either my crew that's mm -hmm. going to be responsible for it or you're handing over the maintenance of a, of a landscape to the owners uh -huh. to have that never-ending expense, right? Mm -hmm. and, and there's no such thing as a no maintenance garden or I get asked all the right. time I just want it to be low maintenance mm -hmm. and I'm like all right well pure poison ivy over here and right. some you know dandelions over here yeah. we're gonna be great yeah perfect. Uh, but if you really want some different color and you know a beautiful look um, it can be done for sure but a really solid good edge is so important mm -hmm. and these big huge boulders just separate all that planting from the lawn so uh -huh. it's really easy to maintain and sure. just you know, we'd whip that edge or, and, mm -hmm. and keep the grass from just migrating right in sure. and being a constant mess in there and everything. So it really like gives you that solid, that structure too. Like yeah. The other thing I really like about a, a, a border, an established border like that is if I design a curve and an edge, mm -hmm. I intend for it to stay that way, yeah. you know? Right. And if, if it's just a cut edge, that's a beautiful thing too. Mm -hmm. Um, but then it, you're, it's open to all kinds of different people's interpretation over the years. Yeah, sure. And so you come back and it's all like, wonky yeah. and it drives me ah. bad. You know? <laughs> what, is, what are these? These are uh, little teeny apples that um, in a storm last year or a year and a half ago or something, uh -huh. both these trees came down. Oh my goodness. And we, we cut the trees down and they flushed out with all this incredible sucker growth. Uh -huh. And I thought... Let's just see what they do as sort of small, weird little shrubby things. I love it. And they're fruiting like crazy and they're just, and we prune them back and they flower like amazing. You know, really? they're like these yeah. just balls of uh, apple blossoms. Mm, yeah. And they're kind of fun. So they they're are. like little, little mini weirdos here. Yeah. No, I never, I'm like, what is that? That's a <laughs> huge berry on that bush over there. Yeah. yeah they're apples. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. We'll see what they do. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes you have to, if they're fighting, you got to give them a chance, sure. right? So do you have, I noticed in Borders, like goldenrod and lilies, do you have specific perennials that are your go-to oh, perennials? Um, I like perennials, when it comes to herbaceous perennials, I like perennials that can um, wear a lot of hats, mm -hmm. right? So in the springtime, if it's got a quick, nice flush of foliage and as it's growing out, you got texture and mm -hmm. there's good foliage, or and or the flowering is beautiful of course and then after they bloom you still have good texture mm -hmm. and good foliage and stuff mm -hmm. if a perennial like poppies for example ornamental poppies mm -hmm. love the big paper yeah. flower they're beautiful yeah. mm -hmm. but they're super ugly they are afterwards yeah. and yeah. The, you know they just turn into like a rotty kind mess and it's flopped over looking yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so then you're just you got to get in there and cut them back mm -hmm. and everything so I like to lean on perennials that um, look good all the time. Yeah, <laughs> like these alliums. I yeah. mean, little ornamental onion are super, super tough. Even after they bloom, they're gonna look great. Yeah. They really take no maintenance at all. It's a mm -hmm. nice little puff on the corner there. Yeah, I love that. So oh. this this trail here is is a cool little space that wasn't really a part of the original design at all. When the barn was being built. Um, there was, you know, big equipment here and on Mackinac Island, we're motor vehicle free. 
so it's all horses and bikes and we can have big equipment and excavators and stuff when we're doing big projects under special permit mm -hmm. and it's very limited. policed yes it's very <laughs> limited amount of time usually when the weather is terrible mm. um, but so when they were digging out for the footings and the foundation of the barn uh, we were leveling up and using all of that that excavation material to make this paddock a little more level and clean mm -hmm. this all up and we dug these all out of the of the hole all these massive wow. limestone chunks and rather than break them all up or haul them away i started flopping them down here and building this whole wall to retain the paddock and the paddock was going to have just sort of a slope to it and allow the horses to go oh. right up to the edge oh, out here great idea but no we we decided to hold them back and make this little trail down through oh. here which now allows you to get from the house to the barn and the back of the barn without having to go through, through the barn sure yeah so well, it, and making use of the natural materials yeah, that were already at your disposal really cool that, that is so uh, neat. all these pocky neat old boulders are really neat and then it you know with a landscape like this i had a rough idea on the design mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. i call them like you know, bar napkin designs mm -hmm. like i'll sit with the clients and we'll sketch some things up and we'll talk through some ideas and we'll talk about the materials and the things i want to use but i pretty much have to say just trust me mm -hmm. you know just let me do my magic mm -hmm. let me do my thing and then it always ends up much much more beautiful if yeah. i'm trying to stick to a plan yeah. It just is, it's very it's difficult. Limiting. It's super limiting, yeah. yeah. I love And on a property stairs. like this too, it's just too big to try and adhere to a plant. Specific. You just, yeah, you dig up and find things that you never would have known. Those rocks are huge. Like that, yeah. I mean, I wonder how much that great big one weighs. Mm, a lot. About as much as a Volkswagen, probably. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you imagine? We have pretty rock free soil. So, like, imagining those kinds of things coming out of our soil. Yeah, and usually you hit it with a shovel and you're like, oh, there's a little rock. Oh, oh, it's, yeah. Oh, she big. Yeah. <laughs> we, you, we need an excavator. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you get around the sides of that thing. You're right. And, whoa. Oh. oh. You see the. Well, you can hear it first. Oh, yeah. And then you see it. That's the mode of transportation, that and bikes. Yeah. It is truly just, it's an amazing experience just to be here. And on Mackinac Island, we have to design for parking, just like anywhere. So, <laughs> you know, That's smaller. Yeah, here we have a guest parking lot. Uh-huh. Um, you know. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. I know. So this is the, the back of the barn. Again, it has a circle drive to be able to pull in. Um, you can pull right into the barn with okay. horse and carriage and they drive right through mm -hmm. and in fact they can drive all the way through the property and up to the front drive oh, and everything. Okay. We really built the whole landscape to be able to drive all around mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but this, because there used to be a cottage on this lot, in order to build a barn, be, this is a historic district, they were restricted on the architecture and what they could do and the barn had to look like a cottage. Um, and so from this back side here, this is the view of just your typical, you know, Mackinac Island, beautiful little cottage, mm -hmm. but it's also a, a very much so just a working barn and wow. kind of with a cottagey facade. With the copper <clears throat> uh, rain gutters. Well, yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, why not? Right? Yeah. That is, I didn't notice that the first time. I just noticed that's gorgeous. So my younger brother and I work together a lot on all these really cool custom projects and he's a a real maestro with mm. woodworking mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. he's a boat builder and he can bend woods and do things that basically anything i can dream up he can do wow. which is dream team yeah it's really mm -hmm. cool yeah and so he built these custom handrails and we just installed these so a couple oh, weeks ago that's cool and they're all site steamed so we steam them on site and and uh and then we can bend, they're like noodles when they come out of the steamer. Uh -huh. And we can bend them right to shapes and things wow. like that. So we, we've been building these a lot. This is all white oak. Uh -huh. And we've been building these a lot on all these little staircases all over the place. That's and super nice. Yeah, yeah. they're just, mm -hmm. you know, neat little detail. And mm -hmm. it's all you need sometimes, just yeah. a little yep. just a little grip. Mm -hmm. But I like that they just sort of disappear and they're they a little do. whimsy. Yeah. You know, yeah. Creeping Jenny in there. Oh yeah, she's my girl. <laughs> she doesn't, it doesn't go crazy here. I know really? some people say this is like 
borderline invasive right in in certain places but it it's it's fairly tameable here Stays so put. i like it well, and it's, it's that chartreuse yeah. color yeah with this deeper darker yes. japanese fern there super nice i love how your beds a lot of these beds they look i mean you're using gorgeous perennials but they look natural they look so i mean that's there's an art to that big time yeah, yeah and really if leaning heavy on the on the ground covers is the way to go you know and then picking perennials that can that can handle it sure. you know picking perennials that can come they're up through it enough. that are robust mm -hmm. enough to to fight and have their space and place in it all um, because my opinion is is if a plant ain't tough enough to handle me then it, yeah, yeah, it does not belong. Yep. And sometimes I'm rough and tough on these mm -hmm. things. I'll whack them back really hard or I'll totally forget about them and mm -hmm. neglect them for a whole year, you mm -hmm. know. And if they can't survive, then... Then we're not using you hasta again. Hasta la vista. <laughs> yeah. See ya. Yeah. Uh, see oh, ya. I love the overhang <clears throat> here, all the big timber. Ugh. Yeah. They, I the circular entry yeah. arch and then how it's mirrored above too oh yeah on that porch pretty nice that is really cool yeah yeah <laughs> <Pretty> nice. <laughs> nice barn <laughs> yeah so this barn this is new very brand new um and it's a very beautiful working functioning barn and is is used and worked every single day so they've got these carriages out every single day um, and the horses are run and, and exercise and stuff like that every single day, all the time. Mm. And which is really important, you know, they don't have a huge paddock or anything like that to run around in and mm -hmm. exercise. So they've got to be taken out and either ridden on the trails on the island mm -hmm. or hooked up to the carriage, run around and everything, because that's how they behave much better when they are, um, you when know, they're yeah, when they're exercised. Otherwise, they get all antsy the cars yeah stunning right can you imagine having these <clears throat> in your garage instead of your car your, uh, car <laughs> it's just <laughs> yeah. uh, just amazing yeah oh. yeah those are really nice carriages some of our clients have unbelievable like antique carriage collections mm -hmm. and they still use them wow. they take them out and use them and keep them operating and mm -hmm. and refurbished and it's a labor of love for sure. It's a lot of work to keep these places I'm sure. up and I'm sure. running and so rolling. So you were talking about how the horses, when they arrive, so they go, this is their, is this their summer This home? is their summer home, yeah. <laughs> this is their summer home. A lot of these horses go to um, the Carolinas or Florida. Really? Uh, you know, just what a life. there's snowbirds you know? too. Yeah, <laughs> there's snowbirds oh too. Goodness. Yeah, there's beautiful, beautiful farms in central and north Florida mm -hmm. where they go and um, but and are continually trained and worked on and mm -hmm. things like that. And um, or they tour around. Some of them are show horses and they do uh, like dressage and all these different fancy oh, riding wow. and stuff with them. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's a whole culture. The, yeah. The, horse people well did we see everything yeah i mean yeah, you could just spend i know all we day. could go on and on mm -hmm. and on this is crossroads cottage so it's certainly one of my favorite most little magical spaces on mackin island but we have more to see yes so we have more to see thank you for walking us through this one jack it's just been so i don't i learned something every time i'm here every time i'm <laughs> in one of jack's spaces it just yeah, I pick up lots of ideas, and I know you guys probably did too. So we are going to go try to get through at least one more garden sure. this morning for you. So thank you so much for watching this video, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.